Hello everybody, welcome back to Farm Sim 17 and Lone Oak Farms. Ready for another episode where we just started harvest. This guy is making the opening round to the fields. And kind of like I mentioned in the previous video, in real life, we generally wouldn't be out combining at 640 in the morning. I'm mainly doing the F because I have a limited time according to the forecast here to get my crop in. I've got rain coming the next two days, uh, which isn't going to help get it in, so I'm starting early. <clears throat> in real life, when we would combine, you know, typically in the morning at some point we would be out servicing them. I kind of described that in the last video, getting them all ready to go for the day and fueling them up, but oftentimes we didn't even start freshening until uh, sometimes even noon. You know, occasionally we could do it in the morning hours, but the reason is, when you look at what the combine is picking up, it was a thick windrow of, uh, of the, the grass seeds and the plants, and so oftentimes, if we go to the combine right here, it doesn't look so bad, it doesn't look very thick, you know, as we sit here and pull it up with the combine here. But a lot of times it could be heavy with dew from sitting there all night long. It would bring up moisture kind of from the soil, the earth, and you need to give it a little bit of time in the morning to dry out. And so I remember occasionally there'd be times mid-morning we could start harvesting. But more often than not, it was closer to noon to where it was finally enough heat here that said we could, we could get going. And I suppose you could have harvested it when it was halfway, but ideal harvesting conditions we always figured was when you could grab the straws and with, in both hands, and then if you could visualize twisting them in your hands, if they would break with one single twist, that was good threshing weather. If you had to wind your hands around and around several times before the stalks of the grass would break, then you had some tough, uh, some tough combine to do. And you could always tell in the evening, you know, that it's the same thing worked in reverse. As the dew would come on in the evening, the grass would get tougher and tougher in, in harvest. And you could just hear it you know, as you sit in those machines and you watch it as it comes into the header and you could hear the, just the groan of the machinery as the straw came in and you could tell it was no longer the heat of the day and the machine was having to work quite a bit harder, you know, just to bring it in and thresh it and, and your risk of plugging the combine, whoops, we got a problem here with <laughs> course play, course play. Is it Farm Sim 19 where it finally started recognizing hard objects and going around it? Maybe it was. I'll see if it was. Alright, yeah, it'll go straight there. Now in 15, it wouldn't do that. In 15, if I would have just done what I just did, it would have gone clear back over to the starting point before returning over here. So course play has improved by quite a lot, but still has some uh, challenges and fears. But as I was saying, you know, in the evening, uh, sometimes, you know, if you didn't quit soon enough, or it's like, oh, I just want to get to the end of this windrow, which we tried to do, you know, to get back to a common stopping spot, if you will. That, a lot of times, is when you would plug the header and then find yourself when you were tired and wanted to go home. Instead, you were out pulling straws, you know, in the header trying to get it free. And, I mean, sometimes, yeah, when the header would plug, it would be like a bale of hay in there. And we tried, I mean, we had knives, we had uh, some old sickle sections and what have you to try to cut the, that stuff. But it was just a pain in the neck. And, but also, tell you what, I mean, it's better to have it happen at that time of day than in the, the full-on heat. Because it's no fun pulling straw when the heat is beating down on you, cleaning it out. Maybe I'll zoom in on this, by the way, while we're stopped. So you can see kind of what grass seed looks like. Um, now this isn't very fancy. This is, uh, uh, 
I don't remember what type of seed it was. I just found it on the internet when I did the modding for this. So I added a fill type, obviously called her ass seed. You know, gave it the symbol over there that it has. And this looks similar to what it would look like in real life. Depending on the variety, it could be a little lighter, darker. Uh, some of the seeds could be a little finer or fatter, depending on you know what variety it is. Uh, but in the game here, we have just the one variety that I chose to put in here. Um, and so that's kind of what the fill type looks like. I don't know if it's in the combine here. If we go in cab and we turn around, if we can... Yeah, this particular machine here, you can't see it in cab, so not a biggie. All I know is a combine fills it up pretty quick. And, and you know, that's another bit of modding I think we did. I, I can't remember if I've described this before, but we're picking up the windrows here as part of the harvest. And back in the day, before my time, and, and even during my time, I know there were some farmers who cut the grass standing. So they would have come out here with, you know, a, a header that we would use in Farming Simulator, like the wheat cutter, or the one we would use for wheat and barley. You know, you could cut the grass if the conditions were right with such a header. I think over time, standard practice for the farmers in the area was to first windrow it before, and then, and then coming in with a belt pickup unit on the combine versus cutting its end. And I think one simple reason for that is, is there was more seed you could get by doing it that way than you would get at cutting it to end. You know, it's one thing to cut a stalk of wheat, you know, which is relatively thick and durable. Oh, where are you going? <laughs> Chorus play? I tell you what, i got to bail you out of more trouble. So a stalk of wheat is going to stand upright pretty easily, and the sickle can come through, make a clean cut, you know, no big deal. But the grass stems, you know, if you remember some of the pictures I've shown in earlier videos, you know, they can, they can flop all over, they're a lot finer, and may not all be able to be picked up by the combine header. So, there just tended to be a little more versatility in winrowing it, cutting it in swaths first, and then allowing it to dry in the field uh, before the harvest. Uh, so most of the places you see out here, it's pretty rare that you would see someone cutting it standing. I do remember at least once seeing my grandfather uh, combine grass seeds to end. And I don't think he was very happy about it, as I recall. Uh, typically on Lono Farms, if it happened, I think it meant that a mistake had been made. You know, I probably need some lessons on how to set up course play. Don't I? <laughs> this probably isn't the best place to have put this. We'll drive it and we'll see. Oh, you know what? There was another setting in here, wasn't there? I don't think I have that setting. A line with first waypoint. That's what I need to click. Yeah, still being kind of cantankerous. Come on, Dipsy Doodle. Find the course. It's right in front of you. Let's try that. I tell you what, it really wants to turn that way. I wonder if it's trying to find... The end point, maybe? Is that what it's looking for? Yeah. Try to figure it out, bud. Yeah, so there it goes. I'm trying to remember now what I was talking about. Or force play interrupted. Yeah, and already the combine is sitting out there. Yeah, back in the day, we wouldn't have had the tractor directly offload the combine like this. Combines would have dumped it into some old grain trucks, if you will, and <clears> the <throat> O's would have shuttled the seed to a warehouse. And at some point, I'll show kind of 
what the seed warehouse look like. Um, in real life, these uh, three grain bins don't exist. They aren't there. It's a another uh, building similar to this one here. It seems to be ahead, um, fully enclosed. And it would have been offloaded into a, an augering system, if you will. So, while this is figuring things out and doing the harvest, maybe what I'll do is show some pictures. We'll let him continue this. Maybe we can trust course play for now. Maybe not. Uh, give me just a second here. I'll switch it over to pictures. Actually, this is the uh, map. So, why don't I start some of these? This is from... I bet everybody would recognize this picture. The old barn. It was a beautiful summer day. I don't remember exactly when it was. Either early August, uh, tail end of July. Um, I had asked my uncle. This was two years ago. It was before all the COVID stuff that happened. So this would have been in the harvest of 2019. <clears throat> so I asked him to let me know when the lone oak tree field was being harvested. So... I think I took off work in the afternoon and went up to the farm, and I just loved going up there, loved having an excuse to go up there. So I took a few pictures, and I'll share them with you here. Actually, I took way more, um, but you know what? I'm not a photographer, so <laughs> hopefully these are some of the better ones. Like I say, I think people recognize this, uh, where this picture was taken in, in uh, the Lone Oak map. And let me see if I can see a close-up. Yeah, this was in the car driving in. And this is what a swathed or windrowed grass seed field looks like. You know, where it's cut, this has been lying here for a week and a half, two weeks to dry out. And it's no longer green, you know, like we see in game. You know, it's... I've had to, it's kind of a band-aid you sometimes do for modding. The straw output, you know, coming out yellow and golden color is kind of accurate. But the green grass that's in there and working with the existing grass that's installed to the map, I realize it it isn't the same texture as this. So to really do it right, you know, I would have to install a totally new crop into the map. And and I just didn't care to do that I figured we'd use existing grass but this is what it looks like when it's ready for for harvest it's really kind of a dusty uh, yellow a, a sandy blonde color if you will um, in, in the field uh, this is now I think they still do this where they have a a screw elevator um, if you will or auger conveyor and that's hooked on to the end of the tractor uh, PTO shaft runs it but they will um, they will dump the truck into it here and it will convey it into this building and maybe what I'll just do is show you on the map kind of where this is if I can get my cursor in the right place so I can get over to it where that picture was taken is over in the yard and this building here kind of at this angle if you will let me go back to the picture so he's putting it into one of the uh, uh, banks if you will and I would notice too um, somewhere in there I think it was earlier in the year the A close between this is the warehouse I was talking about this is where the grain bins are now they've enclosed it there's a dump pit in here that takes seed into the cleaning warehouse but this over here where they store machinery in the winter, this is where they also store the seed. And it's dirty that comes straight out of the field. And over the period of the winter, uh, when they can get to it, they will haul it from here in bulk and take it to the warehouse uh, using a scoop on the uh, uh, forklift. And I'll show more on that later as to how the cleaner is and kind of what, what goes on in there. But that's kind of where they took it on this particular day. And, and by the way, take a look at this old tractor. This is an old 4020 John Deere diesel. You know, it's amazing to me that this tractor still survives on the farm. And I just saw it a week or two ago. They still use it. And there are other tractors they've had that have come and gone. 
uh, that have outlived their usefulness or whatever, but they still keep, uh, when I was on the farm, they had two of these and we used them all the time. Now I think they're just down to one, uh, but they're still using it, you know, to do tasks like uh, run this particular auger for which it's great. This is just kind of a picture inside, you know, they jam the thing up in there to, to hold the seed. I think they have a telehandler then that would push on the seed to help stack it up a little bit, but a lot of it's just going to burp out the front. I can't do much about it. This is, I love panoramic shots and the ability to kind of take more in with the eye. I think everybody knows where this is, and that's the lone oak tree. Uh, maybe I'll just hop into the map real quick uh, to get kind of at the angle where it is. I tried to take that uh, picture right about here, if you will, in a panoramic kind of from here over to here just to show a little bit wider what your eyes would see in your natural field of view, if you will. Um, taking a picture of the old lone oak tree field. Um, they've already started harvesting. Uh, you can see they have the tractor. Now this time era in 19, now they had a chaser bin and a tractor with it. I think it's, uh, is it 8330? I don't remember the, the number on it. There's one of the combines kind of coming up this way, coming around the field. Uh, we'll see it in a moment in the old lone oak tree in the background. Sometimes they have joined these fields here. Um, this has been a moving dirt strip over the years. Uh, back when I worked there, this dirt strip I think was located over here, kind of closer on that edge. Um, but anyway, all depends on the contracts, how much they're trying to grow in terms of acres or, or what have you as to where, where they set that up. More close-up picture here. Um, I don't know if there's a close-up of just, yeah, that isn't a good enough picture. It's one of my cousins that's running this, uh, one of the children from my uncle who owns the farm. Um, I don't remember what that combine, particular combine is. Um, Lone oak tree in the background, but there's the same old belt pickup. And speaking of belt pickup, maybe we should go check on course play and oh look at that yeah see you leave for just a minute and course play will screw you every time but it looks like you did a little bit of work all right we'll leave them be on that and go back to our pictures if i can get my icon on the right spot oh you know what it's doing to me it's doing the same thing I did the other day I'm running too many things at once so it doesn't like it when I do that I think we were here um, that picture there oops there's another one uh, kind of same day and what I so appreciate about this farm still being in the family you know it's they still let me come up and wander around the place kind of at will. And I really appreciate that. I mean, I just, um, you know, it was hot. and But I spent all my time out of cab. It was tempting to go in for some air conditioning. But I just like getting out on these fields. There's just so many memories that come to mind, you know, when I go out and, and, uh, and just walk around. Smell the air, the seed, I just so many memories come as a rush back, and I don't mind being out. I mean, I've occasionally, I've tried to go up once a summer, and I take my boys up there with me, so they can kind of, uh, you know, when they were just little duffers, I would take them and go combining for a day, um, so they could kind of get some idea of what the owl was like. Um, their lives have taken kind of a different turn from mine, so... You know, it's just, I know I've commented on this before, it's we all have whatever situation we're handed and there's uh, there's benefits and there's drawbacks and there's uh, opportunities that one may have over another. It just some of those are just luck of the draw of life as it is. Here's another panoramic. Um, and I think people know kind of where this was taken. I'll maybe go to the map here real quick that's kind of a panoramic up here at uh, this angle if you will 
you know, kind of looking towards the pond and also looking up towards uh, the, the tree. And, and you know, I got to say, in the map, you'll see the ever-present uh, Mount Hood. In real life, it isn't quite that, that simple. Um, what I noticed on a number of pictures, you know, even if it does show, it's amazing that a number of times it won't show up in the picture. Even though you can see it that you're in real life, I don't know if that's how the the camera takes in the color or or just what causes that. But oftentimes you couldn't see the mountain. And in real life, I'm not sure if at this angle if you could see it or not. I mean, it's very hilly, so it could be hiding behind this hill. But I do know when you get up on top here, you can definitely see it. But I don't know if you could see it here at, at this angle. Picture from another angle. Now I'm up kind of on the side of the hill. This is the main farm over here, if you will. The lone oak tree would kind of be up the hill behind me and to the left. So I'll maybe dip over to the map and show kind of where that is. This would be a picture maybe about at this angle somewhere in here, if you will. So I like A. So up here would be the tree. I'm kind of just on this slope, watching the harvest and enjoying the sunshine. Let me just return to our all right, horse play is behaving. That's a good thing. Back to our picture show here. Now I'm back down, like I said, I just wandered all over in here. Now I'm back down near the um, where the old road would have been heading up to the oak tree. This is right on the crest of the hill. The pond is just over to the left. The lone oak tree is up here. I'll kind of show on the map about where the out would be. That's kind of down over here, if you will. And and this is where the the dem map, you know, that mappers will download. A bullet bill would have done this too. Will sometimes deceive you a little bit. Uh, it's actually a hill right here, and the hill drops off. But I have a feeling the data that he downloaded, uh, you know, maybe there just wasn't enough data points to show all that. You don't know how all that works, but it actually goes down a hill here, kind of like you see in the picture. Um, kind of heading down a hill there, just getting ready to offload one of the combines. Oh, we can maybe zoom in on this one and see what it is. 9770 STS. I'm pretty sure they still have that. They have three machines now. One of them is this, and the other machine, I don't know if I have a close-up of it. Maybe uh, we'll see it here at some point. Go to the next. This, I couldn't resist just taking one of Lone Oak Tree itself. It's a pretty weather beaten tree. Doesn't have much uh, protection up there. Um, kind of is what it is, but there's kind of a look at it in 19, kind of what it looked like, 2019. And here is, uh, um, I'm below the tree slightly and to the east and north of it, kind of facing northeast, if you will. Here's the other machine. I guess that's a 96. 50 STS uh, versus the other was a 9770. Pulling in a windrow, and again, I'll show you kind of on the map where whereabouts that would be. Oops, apologies. Be from the oak tree. It'd be kind of over here, looking at this angle. Maybe somewhere about yay. So I have a feeling Mount Hood, if we're able to see it, is hiding right behind the combine at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's at that angle. And incidentally, the crop this year over in this field, I believe, is radish. It looks similar to the grass seed over here. I may have a picture of what it looks like here and just in, in another one. But they, they do harvest some radish seed up there, too. Um, kind of like the um, oil seed uh, radish that we have 
Is that oil seed radish? I think that's oil seed radish that we have in the game. Only up here they harvest it for seed. Yeah, here's a picture of it kind of close up. The pods, um, these are drying out, getting ready for harvest. They would have done that, I think, after they do the grass seed. Uh, they would have come in and harvest these. So I just I wandered over there and took a picture of it. And this is, yeah, over by that field, just kind of looking back at the hill, at the lone oak tree. And that's a, another thing, you know, if, as I go to the map, I can again take you kind of where this is. That's down over in this area, looking back this way. So I'd be roughly here, if you will. And once again, the dem map for this here, I think it's too small of an area to pick it up. There actually is, in real life, this is a hill. There's a bulge right here. Um, so you'd be going downhill as you headed this way in a dip kind of in this area right here. That's kind of where, where this picture was taken, looking back. I don't know how many more pictures I have here on this run. One more panoramic. Uh, the pond is here, lone oak tree. This is the main farm here. Just trying to take in as much as I can to the picture. Can't really do it justice. And you know, I obviously I'm spending a lot of time here on Lone Oak visiting with you about it. And it's uh, it became a somewhat prominent map in the farming sim world, which is really cool. But I know there's lots of other special farms, you know, that maybe many of them were built into farming sim apps and many that weren't, that it's just a special place somewhere on the planet that your family had a farming operation on. And it's hard to describe the beauty of that in words. It's maybe a little easier to put a picture to it, but it, pictures don't do it justice either. It just, you can't hardly replicate it no matter what you do. And like I say, I don't know how to take a picture. I try to keep my shadow out of it, but I didn't succeed uh, this particular time. Another panoramic, um, kind of looking down towards the pond. There's a main farm, just watching the harvest, watching them go. And I notice now they uh, they aren't really spreading the straw. I don't think they spread it when they know it's going to end up getting picked up and baled. And they're not going to bale it directly behind the combine. I don't think that's what they would do. I think they use another winrower that would accumulate several rows together, if you will, when the baler would come through. But here we can see clear off in the distance. Um, I think it's this road right here. That's the far side of the Lone Oak map, if you will. Uh, Sunnyview Road, I know I've described it in, in a previous video. So you can see clear to the far end of the map, if you will. Here we're on the southern end, uh, what it would appear like in real life. And that's all the pictures I was going to show here at the moment. Uh, we'll hop back in game and... Yeah, uh, I've got to question the confidence of... Uh, Force play once again. I'm uh, thinking that maybe uh, this wasn't the brightest move to set it up so near to the corner of the building. But what can I say? We'll check our combine out. And he's waiting. Or she. Don't know who's driving it. Yep, looks like a she. Hang on there, Blondie. So I'd be curious what people think in the comments. I mean, is this a reasonable compromise with reality? I mean, I tr this is dry grass down here, Winrow. So it isn't green, green, if you will. Uh, but this is regular old straw coming out of here. Probably wheat straw, for all I know. So it's kind of mixing and mingling, if you will, a few things. Uh, but I think it works. Um, at least to suspend reality for a little bit yet to to harvest a little grass seed and pretend in game. <laughs> I'm just glad at least a course play will follow the the uh, winrows lined up, so I don't have to come in and, and do all of them myself. Kind of handy to have have the ability to do that.
and of course it has to come across the field just like that and this piece north of the house is quite a bit flatter than uh, some of the other areas so so yeah I remember back when we would do this all three machines would be wandering around out here um, you know the obviously the hillside ones would be versatile you could use them on the hills or the flat but the the 8820, the flat that machine, had to be used wherever it was uh, most efficient, you know, on the flats. Well, I can't hardly believe it, but I think I've already covered another 30 minutes, so I'm going to call the episode there. Thank you for, for listening, and hope you enjoyed Lono Farms, even though it's kind of getting to be an old game now. But thanks for stopping by, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Take care until then. Bye-bye.